Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today I have two projects on my workbench. First up, we got the PCBs for the VFD module of our Nixie thing. So this is a thing we're building that uses all the different Nixie tubes we've acquired over the years and puts it in one big long chain. We showed this at some maker fairs and other places. This is using the IN12 tubes and we've gone over this on a previous video. But now we're adding a VFD module and this isn't necessarily a Nixie tube. Uh, this is a vacuum fluorescent display tube. So instead of that nice orange color, they have sort of a green glow. And it's a different display technology and uses a different voltage range. But we built this little board so that we can chain it to our Nixie thing. It's got a top holder like that. And then the control board goes here behind it like that. So we have a complete module. And then it just plugs in to the rest of the row here with the rest of the Nixies. I wanted to be able to demo this today, but I'm still missing a few parts. The other project I've been working on is a Bus Pirate Experimenters kit. This is a kit that combines a Bus Pirate with some chips, and the goal is to teach how to use protocols and electronics in general. It's based on the Arduino Experimentation Kit, made by a company called Umlaut in the UK. We traveled with the Umlaut team in India and China recently, and they encouraged us to make a kit like this for the Bus Pirate. The Arduino Experimenters Kit has an Arduino, in a box, along with a breadboard. It includes an acrylic sheet to hold the Arduino and the breadboard together. It's also got wires, LEDs, resistors, a few chips, a servo, a motor, and some other things you'd need to do about a dozen different Arduino experiments. One of the cool things about the kit is it includes some printed documentation, which people have been asking for for the Bus Pirate forever. First up, we've got a manual like this that actually has a guide to the dozen or so experiments you can do. And then it has these cut out breadboard overlays. So you cut out the sheet and put it on top of the breadboard and it tells you where all the different components go and what connections to make. I think that's a really good idea. It makes it almost foolproof to get up and started. So we've been working on our own version of this project. We've already cut our own acrylic sheet to hold the bus pirate on one side and a sticky PCB on the other. It's cut to the size of the DP standard board so Presumably it could go in a case itself. And then in the kit, some resistors, some LEDs, some wires to connect the bus pirate to the breadboard. So we'll put our acrylic sheet in here. We're already in the process of designing a cardboard box to fit the bus pirate. So it goes in here nicely. We may also include one of the new bus pirate cases. Now the key to making this worthwhile is what chips we're actually going to include with it. There's some things that are a no brainer. For example, EEPROMs and SPI and I2C are really common chips. Learning how to use that data storage chip is a great exercise for anybody starting in electronics. And they're fairly straightforward, easy to use, inexpensive, and most importantly, available in DIP. Everything we use in this kit, since it'll be going into a breadboard, will probably have to be DIP. Though we're considering adding a bonus pack of service mount chips in various packages along with some adapter boards. So people who want to solder, who want to try their hand at soldering surface mount for the first time, have some bonus chips they can use and plug it into the breadboard and try it out with the Bus Pirate. We'll probably also include a 74595 parallel output IC. That way you can test out a three wire protocol and light some LEDs with it. Uh, that's a pretty cheap and inexpensive chip that comes in dip too. We're also looking back at the various versions of Bus Pirate development boards we've made in the past, trying to find some chips there that might be good candidates. The TC74 from Microchip is an I2C, I believe, temperature sensor. Uh, it comes in a TO220 package, but as you can see, it's got five legs there, and it's not quite standard spacing. It doesn't fit in a breadboard very well, but it's a cheap and expensive through-hole chip, and I think it would be a good one to include. Well, also, if we can find them at the right price, include some one-wire chips, but one-wire is actually a fairly complicated protocol, and it's a, it's a very lengthy interaction to get the data out of it. So I don't know if that's conducive to writing the instructions in a simple little book. Other chips we've got on here that might be good candidates are the real-time clock here. It's really easy to make up that circuit with a little crystal. Another thing we could possibly include is an LCD and an LCD adapter. Though I'm not quite sure on this because these are both heavy things that take up a lot of real estate in the box. So I'm not sure if there's room. I think sticking to the profile 
of the Umlaut Ardex box is a good idea. If you get much bigger than this, I think shipping is gonna become a concern. So this is just the briefest possible overview of the Buzz Pirate Educational Kit we've been working on. I'll put the complete list of ICs I'm considering in the post below. And over the next few days, I'll start to release pages of the documentation and also the new mini website we've made to document the whole kit. So if you don't have the printed version and you've already got the chips yourself, you're still welcome to print it out or read the website and follow along with your own parts. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. I'll be back next week with the latest developments on the Buzzpower Educational Kit, as well as some new PCBs that just arrived today. See you next week.